How's it going everybody? It is the Keenest Fox here today and it's my channel where I talk about anime video games and cartoons, most notably Sonic and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And today I'm talking about, well, TMNT. So I've been kind of sitting on this topic for a while, uh, but I actually wanted to review the first Last Ronin comic and I'll review the other uh, two after this. Um, it's a must read for all turtle fans alike such as myself. Currently I'm waiting for issue 4 to, um, to drop, so it's just nice to just talk about other things outside of just the Moon Town stuff, uh, since I just think that's like probably the most boring story in all of TMNT. But we're not going to talk about it here. We're going to talk about what's all you know what's currently going been going on. The story opens up with the Ronin walking into the polluted waters with no regard about his health, just to enter the futuristic-looking city of New York undetected. As he's making his way through to the Foot Stronghold. He's talking back and forth with his brothers off panel. Eventually, he stole a motorcycle and blasted himself all the way to the higher levels of the city. After making his way to his destination, he fights his way through cyborg ninjas and robots, only to be knocked down to a lower level, landing face first. The clan's leader, Oroko Hiroto, grandson of the Shredder and son of Karai, sends his forces after him, uh, practically just shitting himself, uh, pretty much. Uh, to just to ensure the demise of the last mutant turtle. The Ronin manages to get away and decides to commit seppaku to end his family's feud with the Orokus before he passes out in the middle of his suicide attempt, only to awake to his uh, lifelong friend April O'Neil. April then reveals that the Ronin is Michelangelo. And that's the story of the last Ronin. Alright, so now I'm going to share with you my thoughts on what I thought about this. This comic was actually a banger. And it's one of the best things to come out of 2020. It's mostly just a lot of monologue and action, which is a lot similar to Mirage issue number one. Even some of the attacks and poses gets a lot of homage. Uh, they even get a reference to the 2003 episode, same as there never was. From what I've heard, this was a scrapped idea from the old comics, which is actually nice to see the light of day. Originally, I thought the last Ronin was going to be Raphael, since he's Eastman's favorite turtle. But it's actually nice to see Michelangelo get some focus. It's kind of heartbreaking to see Mike this way, being suicidal and brooding when he's always been like the bundle of joy in his family, but I'm not exactly against it either, uh, since I think his character does uh, go through a lot of uh, trauma behind his layers. So usually, you know, Michelangelo is usually the one who's smiling on the outside, but he's hurting on the inside. Uh, that's definitely the case in like IDW. So it's like TMNT's version of The Dark Knight Returns, basically, uh, you know, by Frank Miller or Old Man Logan. And luckily, this is just a um, Elseworld story. It's like an alternate future, so it's not like the definite future of the Mirage Turtles or IDW or anything like that. It's just an alternate take. It's a lot similar to Mirage, but it's not exactly Mirage itself, you know? Uh, not those Turtles Prime. So, anyways, uh, the comic really does encourage you to read more, but unfortunately, it just releases months apart. So, <sighs> waiting is kind of a struggle. So, why do I think you should read it as a fan? Alright, so this series of comics will center on the iconic rivalry of the Hamato and the Roku clans. And it's like in a scenario where it's like the end game boiled down to the two of the youngest members currently serving as the heads. You know, you have Michelangelo, who's the youngest of his brothers and family. And he, uh, you got Oroku Hirozo, who's like the grandson of the Shredder and son of Karai. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and it's like, you know, since day one, like in Mirage, you know, the first uh, comic of the Turtles, it was always about the Hamato and the Rokus versus each other. It was like, well, you know, uh, that cycle where basically um, Oroku Nagi, that's in Mirage, he killed um, Hamato Yoshi, or no, I take that back, my bad. Hamato Yoshi killed Oroku Nagi, and then um, Saki's brother, that's the Shredder, he didn't like that, and he basically killed Hamato Yoshi and his wife Tang Shin. And Splinter, who was his pet rat, was uh, pissed about that. And then after he got mutated and was able to train up the turtles and stuff, uh, they went and got revenge. So it's like that back and forth. So it's really cool to see uh, some of that. See the hung get more like, yeah, we definitely get to see definitely this, uh, you know, this type of rivalry and whatnot in a scenario of probably how it all is going to end. Uh, who knows? Uh, but yeah. There's lots of mystery and questions to be asked, like who's the Ronin, who's Oroku Hirozo, how did like how did Splinter and the other turtles fall, how did the foot take over New York, etc. So if you're into Mirage Turtles or it's just a take like on itself, like by itself, then you'll love it. 
I'm pretty sure you'll love it. Uh, the characterization, the story, and Michelangelo as the protagonist are like a 90 out of 100 for me, so it's like 90%. That's like an A+, plus or not A+, plus, that's an A-, for me being the revenge type of story. It's pretty good. Uh, nothing that like, really stands out, but you know, or nothing that I haven't seen before, but it's pretty good. Uh, some of the weaker links, though, I would have to say is with the antagonist, Oroku Hiroto, who doesn't display much here besides hiding behind armies, which is like an 85% out of 100. He kind of just says, like, regular bad guy dialogue and stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, so not too much of an impressive showing right here in the first comic, but, uh, but I believe in, what was it, the second comic? Yeah, or the third? Yeah, he's definitely going to uh, improve. But the art and the action and the backgrounds are all perfect scores. So overall, this comic is like a 90%, uh, 90, what am I going to say, 90%, 96%, which is like an A+. Plus. So trust me, I think any Turtle fan would enjoy, or not any, but I'm pretty sure most Turtle fans um, who loves like reading that noir type of uh, edgy stuff, like with uh, Mirage and stuff, or Image, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll love it. You'll love it, so... Definitely go check it out if you um, just don't got nothing to do. If you want to like look into something interesting, uh, the last run is probably for you. All right, uh, that's the end of my video here. I hope you guys like, share, and subscribe. This is the Keenest Fox, and I am out. Peace. And until we meet again. And by the way, if we get up to like 200 subscribers, I'll do a face reveal. So uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, I hope you guys have a good one.